In this video, we're going to be going over the top 10 rules I use for success. Now, different people are going to have different opinions on this or different rules maybe that they follow, but just throughout my career and my businesses that I've ran over the past couple years, these are the top 10 principal rules that I use that are uh, pretty consistent among every single one to achieve success in them. So right off the rip, we have number one. Stay positive always. It doesn't matter what happens in your life or in business or anything. You have to stay positive. If you don't stay positive, you lose everything. Getting negative is really easy to do. I mean, if something goes wrong, it's really, really easy to turn and then blame somebody else or uh, say this isn't going to work or this isn't for me or everybody who's ever been successful is only successful because they got lucky. You know, it's, it's really, really hard to stay positive, but being positive um, is, is like, I put that at number one because it's literally the most important thing, okay? It's Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, so when you're running your business, don't expect it to be a walk in the park because it's hard. Lots of things will go wrong nonstop, and your job as a business owner is to overcome them problems. I mean, that's actually how I define business. Business is nonstop problem solving. Rule number two, fear is a lie. And it's, it's true because a lot of people won't even start to chase their dreams or do what they want to do in life because they're just scared of what's going to happen. They're scared of the consequences. Like, what if I don't make money right away? What if I can't pay for uh, rent this month? Or what if I can't pay my car payment? How am I going to afford to put food on the table when I don't have any money coming in? And I guess valid points, but you got to realize, like, you're never going to succeed in a business if you have any level of fear. Because uh, when you do start running your own business and chasing your own dreams and finally doing what you want to do in life, it's, it's, it's crazy the way it works, but it, it will literally expose all of your fears to you and you have to like overcome every single one of them. So if those are your fears, then I guarantee you, you're going to have to go through them. You know, don't let fear consume you. Feed off of it. Okay? If you need to pay them bills, if you have to pay rent this month, then you should be calling twice as much. You should be trying to get twice as many clients. You should be hustling even harder. That should be your motivation. But don't let that be the reason you don't start. There's always going to be something in business. Okay, You're always going to have bills. You're always going to have liabilities and different things that you're going to have to do in life that are going to get in the way of you doing what you want to do. So uh, fear is just a lie. It's Actually, it's an excuse. It's an excuse to procrastinate and not do what you want to do. Number three, choose the people around you very, very carefully. So um, this, again, personally and business life-wise, you always want to make sure that you have the right people around you. I'm sure you've heard before that you are the sum of the five closest people around you. Like, if you're going to have negative people around you, you're just going to be negative all the time. Likewise, if you're going to have positive people around you, you'll be positive more often. Like, let's say you do start your own business and um, you're not 100% in what to do, so you're like, oh, I'll just start a business partnership with my friend because um, that way we'll have two people in here, two, two hands will be in the pot, and then twice as much is going to get done and we'll get successful twice as fast. Don't do that, okay? Don't, don't start a business with somebody unless they're the right person. It doesn't matter if you're friends. It doesn't matter if you're family. Like, you could potentially work together, but if they're not the right person for the actual job, then it's going to end in disaster. Um, believe me, I know that. I've been through it multiple times. Like I, um, I, I believe business partnerships could work, uh, like 50-50 partnerships on businesses, stuff like that, not official like public entities where you trade stocks and shares. But um, I believe that private companies can um, work still if you have a partnership, but they're not going to work uh, unless you guys are on a completely humble level ground and each person is like contributing something real to the company. Okay, so choose the people around you very, very carefully. Uh, a big thing with sales is, uh, and not just selling when it comes to selling a product or service, but selling thoughts and ideas to people and this and that. Uh, but the way it works is, is the mere exposure effects. If you're going to have people around you who are pushing negative thoughts and negative ideas on you constantly, then uh, their negativity is actually going to influence you to make negative decisions because you like, trust, and resonate with them. You want to be really careful who you have around you. Rule number four is you're going to lose. Like, you just have to accept the fact that you're going to lose. I think it's human nature that nobody likes to lose, but you're going to. If a doctor didn't go to medical school and practice failing doing surgery multiple times over again, and you were the first patient that he ever worked on and did surgery on, then there's a good chance he's going to mess it up, and you might not be waking up off that table. 
You have to embrace the failure. You have to be willing to want to lose more every single day than you want to win. You can't grow without losing. Rule number five is that if you're only doing something for money, you're going to fail. So never do anything just for money. Right now you see a bunch of micro-influencers on Instagram and Facebook and all over just trying to sell you courses on uh, how you can make a million dollars in 30 days or these get-rich-quick schemes. And I'm not saying they don't work because every single one of them to some extent does work. What I'm saying is that you don't want to buy into those necessarily unless it's for you. If it's not something that you are passionate about, that you have a fire burning inside you, that you want to wake up every, every morning extra early to actually do, then it's not going to work out for you. Because what are you going to do once you have all the money in the world and that fire that's burning inside you goes away? Your business is going to fail. Okay, I've been there too. I've, I've actually created businesses that have made eighty dollars to $100,000 a month in revenue. And then at the end of the day, once you have a bunch of money, you don't necessarily like have that fire still in you that you want to keep doing that because it's not what you like to do. Okay, it's, it's compared to this, if you're working a job right now or if you've ever had a job in life that you despised and you didn't like, it's like waking up in the morning and going to that job. Sure, you're making money, you're comfortable with your paycheck, but it's uh, at the end of the day, it's not going to be making you happy and it's not what you want to do. So um, those get-rich-quick schemes and all these different things that people are trying to sell, they work. A lot of times they work, but they're not what you should be doing. You need to do what you're passionate about and you need to do what you're good at. If you can find a mix of what you're passionate about and what you're good at, um, then that is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Don't do stuff just for money. Number six, I feel like a lot of people need to hear this one. It's important to maintain a good work-life balance. You need to have a balance in your life. If you're going to be spending all day, every day, working around the clock, where you do nothing else aside from uh, work 18 hours a day and then you sleep the other six, you're going to start to neglect all the other things in your life, like your health, um, your family relationships, your friendships, stuff like that is going to start to dissolve and then you're going to start to feel really, really empty inside because you haven't done anything else up until that point in your life aside from work. So maintain that work-life balance. Okay, If you want to be successful, you got to get on a schedule. Scheduling out what you're going to do every single day is extremely vital. It can be fun to walk out into a forest, but after a couple hours, if you don't have a map to help you get out of there, then you're going to be in a pretty bad situation. You want to make sure you have a good schedule every single day. You may want to make sure that you're consistently going to sleep at the same time, waking up at the same time, um, you know, spending time with people who matter to you, having a good um, balance for your health, like going work out, going on a run in the morning. Um, and then you also want to make sure you have free time for yourself. If you don't have anything in your mind that is going to let you get a release in life from what you're doing, then your brain is going to have a chemical imbalance for releasing the good things in life, like dopamine, so you're not going to be able to actually feel uh, a level of joy anymore because you're not giving yourself, you're not rewarding yourself. You're not allowing yourself to even have any um, yard time, any free time aside from what you're doing. You're essentially locking yourself into a mental prison. So the only way to get out of that is to start giving yourself that free time. Number seven is you always want to make sure you're the hardest worker in the room but never the smartest. So it doesn't matter if you're in a room with five people, 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people. You should have a work ethic that says, I'm going to outwork every single person in this room, no matter what it takes, no matter how hard it is. That should be your mentality. But you shouldn't be the smartest person in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, then you're pretty dumb. You want to put yourself in situations that you can learn. And one of the main ways you can learn is from other people. Learn from other people's experiences. So if you're in a room with people who aren't necessarily doing similar things to what you're doing or are not going to provide any value to you whatsoever, then that's pretty dumb of you to be in that room with them. You need to put yourself in situations where you can be with like-minded individuals or a like-minded niche um, or working against competitors so you can be the hardest worker in the room but not the smartest. You want to learn from your friends and enemies and you also want to work harder than your friends and enemies. Number eight is train every single day. Now the top three basketball players of all time, arguably, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, they all train every single day and they all have coaches. So there's different ways to train. 
like I said before, you can learn from other people, which is really the only shortcut there is to life is learning from other people uh, because they went through experiences, so you can like, literally learn first time from them. That's why mentorships are so big. That's one way you can learn. Another way you can learn is from books. I myself hated reading books before until I started finding stuff that I like to read. And once I started finding content that I like to read, it becomes addicting. So books are an excellent way that you can train yourself and learn new things every single day. I mean, basically what you're doing is you're downloading information into your brain from somebody else. Now you can obviously do like online research, watch videos, uh, like if you're in sales, you could practice in the mirror, like talking to yourself in like live scenarios and stuff like that. So there's a million ways that you can train. So if the only time you're practicing what you do is actually when you're performing for real, then it's not going to be good. You're not going to get the results you want. You're not going to understand why things are not working right, right? Things are going to not convert at the level they're supposed to because you're not training. And you're going you're gonna to say it's all sorts of this and that and different things. And then you're going to be like, oh, I need to go back to the drawing board and procrastinate for two more weeks doing things that don't even matter. When in reality, what you need to do is you need to be training. Number nine, this is a really big one too that I probably should have put up higher on the list. But don't procrastinate. Procrastination really simply is moving without progress. So you can run all day on a treadmill, but you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to end up in the exact same spot when you're done. And that's exactly why a lot of people in like their businesses when they start a business or if they're training for a sport or whatever, they don't succeed because they're actually not doing anything to progress themselves. They're just moving. So if you're just starting a business, for example, a lot of people would automatically just think to themselves, the most important thing you need to do is go out and get business cards, build a website, start writing down a business plan, you know, stuff like that that's actually not even going to help your business right away. What you need to start doing is being a practitioner and, and actually doing stuff that's going to progress your business. Stuff like calling prospects and people who could potentially be customers, getting people into a pipeline so you can close them down, sending out emails, sending messages on social media, um, stuff like that. Otherwise, you're not going to be progressing. You're going to be procrastinating. So don't confuse movement with progress um, because it's just procrastination. Also, like if you're trying to become like an influencer, for example, on TikTok, like you want to create funny content, then you shouldn't be scrolling through TikTok for three to four hours to find an idea just to entertain yourself, to make it feel like you're doing something because you're not doing anything. You're moving. You're not progressing. Instead, what you need to do is you need to just start making those videos, okay? Start putting out the content, start doing things. Just like this video, for example, like I'm doing right here. It's very unorthodox. I have no script. I have a list that I created in 10 minutes of the top 10 rules that I use for success in, in my businesses and life in general. So I didn't sound like it took a bunch of time to do this. This is all off of one take. I'm going to do some minimal editing to it as you've seen so far. I'm going to put it out there on different platforms. People are going to see it and it's going to be good enough. So that's another thing to go along with it. Don't worry about being a perfectionist. Most times you just need to do something once, maybe twice. Okay, but you don't need to do it a million times to get things perfect. Uh, da Vinci painted Mona Lisa three times before he settled on the final portrait of her that we all know and can recognize today. But the x-rays underneath show that the painting was pretty similar before. Da Vinci was a perfectionist. Can you imagine how many more great works of art he would have created if he did not spend all that additional time recreating the exact same thing he's already created? Okay, a lot of people out there are not going to notice the imperfections that you're going to have in your work. So don't be a perfectionist. Just pump stuff out and get it done. And another note with that, you do want to make sure you have some level of quality. So you work hard until you get to a point where you can get a team together to monetize your time. But in the beginning, when you're just starting something out or you're just starting to scale something, you need to do things that are going to make you progress and just avoid moving. And number 10, you want to know what you're doing. You don't want to look like a stone cold novice. So on the other note, like we were saying before, like uh, you just want to go, 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 do this, do that. Like if you don't know what you're doing and you look like a complete rookie, then you're not going to succeed anyway. Like you have to know what you're doing. I just got some cornhole bags, which if any of you guys know what this is, cornhole, it's a game that's getting really popular in the Midwest right now. Actually, I think all across the country. And uh, you throw bags full of beans or corn at a two foot by four foot board that has a hole in the center. All right? 
So if I'm going to go, I've actually been competing, so I bought some pro bags. But um, if I'm going to start throwing competitively in national tournaments and state tournaments, trying to win championships or whatever, and I've never thrown a bag before in my life, that's going to be pretty damn embarrassing walking out there and throwing it and missing every single one off the board. So instead, what I did before I actually started doing it is I figured out how to do it. I figured out how to throw the bag properly, okay? Flat bag. Instead, before what I did, before I got good at it, is I would do a tumble bag like that, tumble over itself. It was unpredictable where it would land. Now I throw a flat bag. So it uh, lands on the board and I know exactly what's going to happen with it. So I learned what to do before I started doing it. Uh, one of the first businesses that I created was a marketing agency where I went around from car dealership to car dealership and uh, was doing their uh, online marketing campaigns for them for social media and Google and stuff like that. And before I even stepped foot into a dealership, I made sure I knew what I was talking about. Because if you look like a stone cold rookie, nobody is going to buy into you. Because people aren't buying the product, they're buying into you. You know, people have to have an absolute level of certainty with you that you're going to solve their problem. Otherwise, they're not going to trust you, like you, resonate with you, anything like that. Because they're going to look at you as nothing more than a rookie. So, those are the top 10 rules uh, that I use, guys. I probably use a bunch of other stuff. But those are ones that were kind of coming to mind there in preparation for this video. If you feel like I'm missing something that's super important here, drop it in the comment section below. I read every single comment and reply to all of them. And I'd love to see your guys' feedback. You know, give this video an honest rating. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. And I have a lot of crazy stuff that is going to blow your mind here in the future uh, coming up on upcoming videos I have planned out that you definitely don't want to miss out on. So hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys over on the next video.